This press conference came out two days ago, but I didn't see it till today. And it was right before Trump left for um, to meet with um, Kim Jong Un. And I have to tell you, what he has to say in this, um, I'm just going to play like a few minutes of it for you. It's about the trade deficit and how it was caused and how that has been what has been destroying this country um, and what he's going to do about it. So um, I'm going to post a link to this because it's fascinating. The relationship is a 10. We have a great relationship. Angela and uh, Emmanuel and Justin, I would say the relationship is a 10. And I don't blame them. I blame, as I said, I blame our past leaders for allowing this to happen. There was no reason this should happen. There's no reason that we should have big trade deficits with virtually every country in the world. I'm going long beyond the G7. There's no reason for this. It's the fault of the people that preceded me. And I'm not just saying President Obama. I'm going back a long way. You can go back 50 years, frankly. It just got worse and worse and worse. You know, we used to be a nation that was unbelievably cash flow oriented, had no debt of any consequence. And they'd build the highway system. We built the intern, you know, the interstate system out of virtually out of cash flow. And it was it was a lot different. No, we have a very good relationship and I don't blame these people, but I will blame them if they don't act smart and do what they have to do because they have no choice. I'll be honest with you, they have no choice. They're either gonna make the trades fair because our farmers have been hurt. You look at our farmers for 15 years, it, the, the graph is going just like this down. Our farmers have been hurt. Our workers have been hurt. Our companies have moved out and moved to Mexico and other countries, including Canada. Now, we are gonna fix that situation. And if it's not fixed, we're not gonna deal with these countries. But the relationship that I've had is great. So you can tell that to your fake friends at CNN. The relationship that I've had with uh, the people, the leaders of these countries has been, I would really rate it on a scale of zero to 10, I would rate it a 10. That doesn't mean I agree with what they're doing and they know very well that I don't. So we're negotiating very hard tariffs and barriers. As an example, the European Union is brutal to the United States. They don't take, and they understand that, they know it. They, when I'm telling them, they're smiling at me. You know, it's like the, the gig is up. It's like the gig is up. They're not trying to, there's nothing they can say. They can't believe they got away with it. Canada can't believe it got away with it. Mexico, we have a hundred billion dollar trade deficit with Mexico and that doesn't include all the drugs that are pouring in because we have no wall, but we are. We started building the wall, as you know. $1.6 billion, and we're going to keep that going. But a lot of these countries actually smile at me when I'm talking. And the smile is, we couldn't believe we got away with it. That's the smile. So it's going to change. It's going to change. They have no choice. If it's not going to change, we're not going to trade with them. Okay, how about a couple of more? One more Go ahead in the back. Thanks, Mr. President. Eliana Johnson with Politico. Yes, hi. Going into these talks uh, with Kim Jong Un, objective of what you want to get out of them. So what if peace breaks out in the world? Wouldn't that be an interesting thing? Um, <laughs> so I like what he said about they can't believe they got away with it for so long. And I have to tell you, um, I used to work at Kodak. And it was one of the greatest companies in the world to work for when I worked there. And, um, you know, when I left, people thought I was crazy because I was walking away from a job that um, there were 20 people standing outside waiting to get my job. But it wasn't who I was and I wanted to leave. Well, it wasn't too long after that that a corporate raider came in and started selling off bits and pieces of the company. And then um, they started moving their um, production lines to Mexico. 
And then after they moved him to Mexico, they moved him to China. And this is a story that has happened to this country that used to make things and manufacture and have some of the best products in the world. And you know, one of the reasons, um, uh, you know, I was listening to somebody that was talking about um, Sears, you know, that Sears is going to be closing and somebody made the comment, well, all their tools are made in China. All their stuff is crap now. You know, it used to be good. One of my clients just had to get a new refrigerator. And I said, well, how old was your other refrigerator? She said it was about seven years old. I'm like, oh, that's all? You had to get a new refrigerator after seven years? So anyway, I'm going to cut this off now and um, put the link to this um, press conference because it just makes me love our president even more. Talk to you guys later.